Welcome to the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. I'm here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern to regale you with things that have come up this week, always looking at them in light of the Word of God. Tonight I want to talk to you about the presidential race. Are you paying attention to this thing? There is very little about the current presidential race more important than how it would impact our economy moving forward. President Trump promised his program of tax reform, trade reform, regulatory reform, energy reform would get the economy growing again. His critics laughed, they mocked, nah, it can't be done. In less than two years, he has done what we couldn't get done in the last 30. Unemployment's at a 50-year low. Manufacturing is coming back. Wages are rising, especially for those at the bottom two-thirds of the pay scale. And consumer confidence, is in, confidence in the future is running high. The United States is now the world's largest oil producer. Did you know that? This has insulated American consumers from paying at the pump for uncertain foreign supplies at the whims of Middle Eastern sheiks. It has not apparently kept us from paying higher prices the moment those oil wells got blown up. But in the larger picture of things, it has served to put a leveling influence in the system. The United States is also now the world's largest producer of natural gas. This clean burning fuel is heating homes and offices across the country while keeping the air cleaner than ever. American manufacturers pay less to fire their industrial furnaces than foreign competitors do. Quite literally, the Trump energy reform is fueling America's manufacturing boom. Farmers are also benefiting from the administration's moves, strategies for energy independence as well. The EPA green-lighted year-round use of a higher blend of ethanol, E15, and is guaranteeing more than 15 billion gallons of corn-based biofuel will be produced and sold next year. And capping the price of renewable fuel credits to rein in speculators will ensure small independent refiners can continue to provide good-paying jobs and then rein in the cost of fuels that America depends on. So considering these, who would want to change the formula? Well, the 2020 Democrats, that's who. Sticking with their habit of reflexively opposing anything Trump supports, the Democrat candidates propose an economic plan that is a mirror image of the president's. They want more taxes more regulation, more globalism, and less energy. So what do we have? Well, the media has spotlighted, spotlighted the auction. Uh, <laughs> Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and their colleagues are engaged in outbidding each other on tax hikes. You get a Democrat, you're going to get more taxes. Check the box. Revenues from these taxes would be used to greatly expand the administrative state, that is to say, to pay bureaucrats to write more regulations. Check the box. More regulation. Democrats gave us the disastrous NAFTA deal, and now they oppose the USMCA program, the president's replacement deal, that puts America first. In addition, the would-be candidates insist we should wait for Europe and others to act before we stand up to China. This is more globalism. Check that off. Now, all this is disturbing, but it's on energy that we see the starkest contrast between the two parties' policies. Elizabeth Warren and her colleagues have signed on to the radical program of ending the production, transportation, and use of all hydrocarbon fuels. What would be the result of that? 
well, we would have less energy. Check that. A war in pres presidency would shut down pipelines in the Great Lakes states of Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and close the refineries in Ohio. This would throw thousands of people out of work, not just in the building trades, but in the steel and the ancillary industries as well. The price of gasoline, home heating oil, and other fuels would spike. We would be paying what Europe is paying. At the same time, the Democrats promised to end the production of coal, oil, and natural gas on federal lands. This would immediately crash the economies of New Mexico, Wyoming, and other western states that produce so much of our energy. The ripple effect would be felt across the country and internationally as world prices for energy skyrocket. Food prices, food shortages would take off as fertilizers made from natural gas and transportation fuels evaporated. The cost would be measured in lives as well as dollars. We would again be at the mercy of foreign energy from the most corrupt and unstable parts of the world. Now that last point is in character for one candidate in the Democrat race for the presidency. His name is Joe Biden. Biden led the Obama-Biden administration's Ukraine policy, delivering billions in aid to help that country develop its natural gas resources. Conveniently, if not coincidentally, his son soon landed a high-paying no-show job with Ukraine's largest natural gas company. Now consider that this same Joe Biden that encouraged Ukraine, one of the most corrupt places on earth, to drill natural gas, has now called for the elimination of fossil fuel subsidies and promised a ban on new leases for coal, oil, and gas extraction on federal land. That was published in the Washington Post. The no fossil fuel money pledge Joe Biden took clearly does not apply to his son Hunter. Yeah, Biden presidency would lead to shortages of many kinds, but taxes, regulations, and hypocrisy would not be in short supply. And sadly, Biden is the most stable and moderate candidate the Democrats have. As you look forward, look to your bank account, to your job, to the money in your pocket, because you're probably not going to see any of those in the future. <laughs>